Hi, uh, my name is Tim Wright. I'm a performance engineer on Vitali Petros car. So, uh, Spa is quite an interesting circuit for the drivers. Uh, they like it because there's a lot of different types of corner. We have some very high speed corners where the car really uh, needs a lot of grip. It's going very quickly into the corners. And it also has uh, a couple of very long straights uh, where we need uh, maximum speed from the car. Sector one uh, it starts with La Source, which is the uh, very low speed hairpin. Uh, and then there's a short run downhill to Eau Rouge, which is one of the most famous corners actually in, in Formula One. It's probably not the most entertaining corner for the drivers anymore because uh, cars have quite a lot of downfall, so it's, it's reasonably under control for them. And once they get to the top, um, they've got a long straight, which is actually fairly uphill, all the way to uh, Turn 5, Le Combe, where there's a hard braking and then a, a chicane into sector two. Uh, sector two is really the area of the circuit which is mainly high speed corners. It's where we would run more downforce and have more grip if we could. Um, and it contains one of the fast left hand, double left hand corner Puon, which is one of the best corners for the drivers. Sector three, uh, it's another one of the high speed areas of the circuit. Not so many corners, but a high straight line speed. It has Blanchemont, which is another one of the famous corners at Spa, which is a very, very quick left hander and then you're into what used to be called the bus stop. It's now been simplified in uh, recent years, which is a low speed chicane before coming back onto the start finish straight to end the lap. Uh, to be a little bit more specific, um, in sector two is the area of the circuit where we have the most high speed corners. So that's the part of the circuit where we actually really need quite a lot of downforce. We really need the car to have a lot of grip. Um, Sector one and sector three are more what we would call drag or engine power limited. So there we really just want to be going as fast as we can because they tend to be dominated by straights or a, a corner where we're actually at full throttle. So there Spa is actually one of the circuits where we want to be going as quick as possible and have the best uh, engine characteristics. Specifically in terms of the, the car setup, uh, we tend to run a car which is not at the maximum level of downforce because obviously we need the straight line speed the straights but it's also not at the lowest level of downforce because this would be uh, Monza for example where we really want straight line speed. So we'll run a package which is a little bit in between the two, actually similar to Montreal. When you actually look at the cars at Spa uh, you'd see that the front and rear wings, particularly the rear wing, um, will be in a sort of medium setting. So a circuit like Budapest or Monaco you'd really see the face of the rear wing very upright creating a lot of downforce. At Monza, you would see it very flat. It doesn't look like there's much wing. Spa is a little bit in the middle because we have these two areas of the circuit where we need quite different characteristics. Okay, so as we know, Spa is one of the circuits where uh, we quite like to get wet weather. Uh, if we get uh, rain on a Friday, we'll take the opportunity to run either the wet or the intermediate tyre, try and get a good balance for the rest of the weekend. Um, although we don't change the car specifically for the wet, uh, we can tune normal things such as uh, aero balance with the front wing, make the car a little bit more stable, uh, brake balance and tyre pressures. In terms of the tyres that we'd have a, a normal race weekend, obviously we have a, a slick tyre like this one here. The intermediate, uh, which we'll use for moderate rain, let's say when the track is damp and theoretically speaking that tyre should actually be able to go from a, a damp or slightly wet circuit all the way until it becomes a circuit which is dry enough for, for the slick tyre here. And then at the end we have the wet, so this is for wetter conditions and the intermediate will manage uh, when we have standing water. The wet tyre obviously has uh, much deeper grooves in it and this allows the, the tyre to clear the water. So when there's a lot of standing water it really removes the, the water from the circuit and that's why you'll see the spray. Also the intermediate because it's to be used in, in more moderate wet conditions and also as the circuit becomes dry it has a uh, much smaller grooves in it and it can't clear so much water. Yeah, so we use uh, the brake duct to channel the air over the distance of pads which are used to slow the car down. Here I have one of our larger brake ducts. There's quite a large opening here where the air goes in. Here, just to show the difference, we have a, a smaller one and this would be used at circuits such as Spa uh, where we don't need so much brake cooling because the brake demand is not so high so we'd use a smaller one like this. So in terms of aero performance, if we can run a smaller brake duct we will do just because it reduces the drag level and uh, makes the car go quicker on the straight. Technical briefing, Spa.